Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Today I'm in the um, Heather Moorland of the Peak District near Sheffield in the UK. Uh, and this is home to a red grouse, the fastest flying game bird in the UK. It can fly at speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. So what I want to do in this video is to shoot, go through how uh, I approach photographing red grouse. What we'll do is we'll look at how to identify them, we'll look at the habitat that they live in which is very important to them, we'll look at some of their behaviour and then what I'll do is I'll share with you my approach to photographing the red grouse and I'll give you my top five tips. Okay due to some of the high winds up in the moorland I've had to um, come back to, the, to, to my home and uh, record the voiceover for, for the video. Uh, I didn't want the, the, the noise to be a distraction. Okay, so how do we identify the, the red grouse? Well, the red grouse is a, a plump dark brown bird about the size of a, a farmyard um, hen. It's mottled brown feathers that provide it with really good camouflage amongst the heather. Um, they have pale coloured um, feathered legs and feet and that helps to protect them uh, during the winter when the snow's on the ground and also um, the, the heather can be quite um, hazardous to the feet. Um, the male red grouse has a, a, a bright red stripe above the eye um, so it's got a, a bright red eyebrow. The, the, the birds have a very short strong beak which is used for, for actually feeding in the heather. So how do you tell the difference between a male and a female uh, red grouse? Well, the, the male red grouse, as I said, has uh, a reddish brown plumage overall, whereas the female's uh, colour tends to be a little bit duller, it's more cryptic, and it, it actually provides it with excellent camouflage in amongst the, amongst the heather. Uh, and as we said, the, the male has that bright red eyebrow above the, above the eye. The juveniles themselves are generally duller in colour, and they also lack the red eyebrow. If you really want to find red grouses, you need to understand their call. Uh, it's very distinctive, it's in two parts, and I'll, I'll play each part for you, and then I'll play the, 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 the song completely in, in totality. Um, the first part is um, basically, it's like a chunter, and I'll play that for you now. And in the second part, what I want you to do is listen for the word go back, go back. It's as if the, the, the bird is telling you to actually go back, but it actually sounds like go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, and here it is now. One thing to add is that um, the red grouse will use its call. Um, one indicating feature that you need to look for is if you see the bird raising its neck up, that's it in a, a state of alert and it's about to do something and that's normally they're about to fly away. So look out for that outstretched neck which is a sign of alertness. Okay, when it comes to the, the red grouse's diet, uh, remember that short strong beak that, 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 that they have, that's designed for, for eating things like seeds and shoots, and flowers, mainly uh, the, 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 the heather. Um, they will also eat things like berries, uh, other moorland plants and the chicks themselves, if, if, if you're lucky enough to see them, they will feed on insects. Okay, so where are we going to find red grouse? Um, well, the best place to find red grouse is on the upland moorlands uh, around the, the UK. As I said, they extensively live, feed uh, and breed on the, the, the heather moorlands around the UK. Uh, from places like where I've been filming, the, the Peak District, to North Yorkshire, up at the Lake District, the Scottish borders, and then up into the, the central and the upper highlands of Scotland. Uh, this is the ideal habitat that you want for finding red grouse. It's not long after sunrise. 
it's in August. And if I'm quiet, you might just see the ghost. Okay, so how do I go about, or what do I recommend your approach to what red grouse should be? Um, red grouse really are a challenge. Um, they're very skittish, and they will flee at the slightest bit of disturbance. Um, more often than not, all you will hear is the go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, and then the next thing, they're flushed and they're gone. And as I said, they can fly up to about 70 mile an hour. They're very fast. They're the fastest game bird in the UK. Uh, so hopefully these top five tips that I'm going to give you now will help you get close to the, the red grouse and get the images that you're after. Okay, what I want to talk about now is uh, my camera settings. Um, all my photography that I've done on this project for the red grouse has, has been done handheld uh, and there's a reason for that. The heather um, underfoot uh, is, is quite hazardous as I've explained uh, and it's no place for carrying a tripod or even a monopod. Um, so I much I personally much prefer just to, to handhold. Having said that, um, two sets of settings. Firstly, for a stationary bird, I'm looking at um, one five hundredth of a second. I shoot with a 100 to 500 um, RF uh, Canon lens. So, using the reciprocal rule, uh, minimal shutter speed equals the focal length. So, one five hundredth of a second. I set my aperture to 7.1, which is the widest on the lens that I have, and I always shoot in auto ISO. So that's for the stationary bird handheld. Um, once you've got the picture of the bird stationary, what I suggest you then do is you up your shutter speed to a minimum of one two thousandth of a second for a bird's in flight. Um, set your aperture at f8 and again shoot on auto ISO. Tip number five, preparation. Um, go back to my old army days, we had a, a saying, we called it the seven P's. Prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor performance. I've now adopted that to stand for prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor photography. Tip number five is all about preparation. Um, heather moorlands are pretty hazardous areas, especially underfoot, so you need to be prepared. Uh, so what I suggest is that you have things like a good strong pair of ankle support boots. Look to possibly carry a, a, a walking pole just to, to Test the ground in front of you in case there are any holes that you could step into. You need to be, generally speaking, you'll be on the moorland on your own, so you, you, need, you need to think about if there's an emergency. So carry a, a whistle, make sure you've got a mobile phone and you've got a torch. Obviously carry a water bottle and one thing you will definitely need on the, the moorland is insect repellent. Tip number four is to do with location. One date to certainly put into your diaries is the 12th of August each year, which is the beginning of the, the red grouse shooting season here in the UK. Uh, so you need to be very careful and, and, and check to make sure that you're not wandering onto uh, what they call a shooting, shooting moor where they're, they're, they're set up to actually shoot the red grouse. Um, so 12th of August, just be mindful of that. Um, what ideally you're looking for in the location is you, you're looking for good trails through the heather. Um, You'll often find sheep trails where the sheep walk through and you'll generally find that they're very, very um, good underfoot. Um, so keep your eyes out for them. Tip number three is timing. Um, I found that the, the best time to, to, to photograph uh, red grouse is either first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. And a couple of reasons for that. Um, mainly being that the birds themselves will come out of roost in the heather and they'll actively go to, to, to start feeding uh, first thing in the morning. The other reason is that you get, can get quite a lot of people up on the moorlands, uh, especially in the summer walking, uh, and you, you need to, to be uh, on the ground, I would suggest, um, just as it's getting um, sunrise. Okay, and that's perfect timing. As you can see, it's sunrise just now, and I've arrived here up on the moors above Sheffield. Tip number two is everything to do with how you approach um, the, the, the bird to, to, to get the images that you're after. Um, there's really two approaches, you can do it on foot or you can do it in a vehicle. Um, I did a video on how to photograph wildlife from a vehicle which I won't be covering in, in this video and I'll leave a link to that at the, the, the end of the video. Uh, and Here's just a couple of shots that I got um, from, from a vehicle.
Okay, the approach, so how, how do you approach the, the, the red grouse when, when you're on foot? Um, well, firstly, you've got to find them, and that's why the call's so important. And what you'll normally see is either um, a bird with its head sticking out of the heather, or, or you'll hear it, which will give you an idea of what direction it's in. Um, once you've, you've found a bird, what you've got to do is you've got to give the bird time to accept your presence. And you, you need to take your time in trying to get near them. And what I'll do is I'll explain to you uh, how I actually go about that next. Okay, end up actually approaching the, 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 the grouse to, to photograph them, I follow the mnemonic crawl. That's C-R-A-W-L, crawl. So what does that stand for? Well, let's start off with the, the first one, which is contact. When you actually come into contact with the bird itself, uh, as I said, you're either going to see it or you're going to hear it. Uh, and what you just need to do is just stop and then think about what you're going to do next. Really, what you want to do next is the R. And R is route. What you need to do is you need to plan a route of where you are when you've come into contact with the bird and where you think you need to be to actually get the photographs that you're after. And you need to be careful of your, your silhouette, your outline, and what you're also looking for is places that will provide you with cover from view. Next we have the approach, and that's what the A stands for, approach. Um, you need to adopt a low profile, as low as you can. Um, don't walk directly to, 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 towards the bird. If I was to walk directly at you, with point a camera at you, you're not going to be happy. Uh, so the, the birds certainly aren't going to be happy and the, the, they'll, just, they'll just fly away. So look at adopting either a S type or Z type approach. And when you're actually approaching the bird, don't stare at it. Um, look away. Always keep in mind where the bird is. But And, and, and then next thing we need to then do is wait and that's the w in the crawl wait so where you planned your route and you're approaching what you need to do is you need to break that approach up into little short legs so say to yourself i'm going to walk 10 feet stop wait watch if you can get a picture take a picture and then just adopt that approach until you get into your final position so break the approach up into little legs and at the end of it each little leg wait and watch and then finally what you're looking to do is the L in the crawl is to get down to their level you need to look low you need to get down to the grouse's level and that then leads me on to tip number one which is to get at ground level you need to be at ground level when you're photographing the grouse the the, the, the heather especially in in August is beautiful colors uh, and if you can get a picture where you can fade out the, the foreground and the background and you get the, your bird in the middle you can get some amazing um, colours to your photographs which hopefully you'll see when I show you some at the end. Okay what I want to do now is just um, give you some recommendations um, the, the, it's not set in stone but these are, these are the recommendations I would make for the type of images that you want with the red grouse. You want the classic picture of the whole bird um, including the, its feet, which is a, a very, the legs and the, and, and the feet on the red grouse are a very distinguishing um, feature. So you're looking at the whole bird. Um, another good picture to get is with the, the bird with its head sticking out of the, the, the heather. Obviously you want to try and get one in flight. Remember, um, you're looking at a minimum of two thousandths of a second and they can fly up to about 70 miles an hour. Um, you're really ideally looking to get pictures of the, the red grouse in its environment and that environment is the, the heather moorland. Uh, and if you can, try and get some pictures of um, a, a pair of them together. And hopefully, I'm going to show you some images now that, that demonstrate um, those types of images. Finally, what I want to do is, um, I would be failing my duty as a Scotsman if I didn't mention the famous grouse. 
the famous grouse is a, uh, an iconic image in Scotland. In fact, it's an iconic image all over the world. It's uh, one of Scotland's um, best-selling whiskies. Um, it's an iconic brand. Uh, and, and, and again, you'll see the, the, the picture of the, 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 the grouse itself. Is, that's, that's the full-size picture of the bird that you want. That's the, the, the ideal image that you want of a red grouse. So I'm just doing my, my duty for Scotland. <laughs> Okay, thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph the red grouse. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I had. I've spent a lot of time, a lot of early mornings, uh, up on the, the moorlands above Sheffield in the Peak District in, in, in England, um, footing these, photographing these beautiful, beautiful birds. Um, all I would ask, ask is that if you've liked it, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask, um, if you've not subscribed to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography, could you consider doing so? Um, I'd just like to thank, um, just this week, um, I've hit the, the 700 mark of subscribers to my channel. I never thought I would get this far, um, but I have enough. Th thank every one of you for subscribing to my channel. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.